Some of the projects we do, we do projects for animals. And we can see there's many different pictures of many different kids with many different wonderful animals that we're helping at animal sanctuaries, at animal shelters. We're helping take care of all these four-legged and winged and other kinds of creatures on this planet that they need our care because other people have been messing with them. Somebody needs to step in and help them out. So that's just an example of something that maybe you can do. And there are a gazillion, not really, I'm exaggerating. Okay? There's so many organizations that help animals. You can help in your own way, whether it be the bird that the lesson was talking about at her own home, okay? Whether it be other animals anywhere. You see a stray dog wandering the streets. You can actually call with your parents' permission. You never calls with your parents' permission. You know, you could call to get some assistance to get that dog where he needs to go. Here, you can see us at apple orchards and orange groves. And we go and we pick thousands of pieces of fruit. And I mean thousands of pieces of fruit in one day. And yes, yeah, sometimes we let the kids take some home so they can eat them. And while we're out there picking, we're actually eating while we're picking and all of that. But we're bringing thousands of pieces of fruit back to homeless shelters, okay? Because if you know, unfortunately, there are people who don't have places to live and they live in community shelters and usually the food they get is canned government unhealthy stuff, okay? And speaking of healthy stuff, by the way, I will reward you guys who are paying attention at the end. I didn't realize we couldn't eat or drink while we were in here, but that's okay. I've got a bunch of food and snack over there and drinks. Healthy conscious stuff, I believe that you've got to take care of your body. That's one of the choices you have every day, right? If you want to live longer and healthier and make more good in the world, you've got to take good care of yourself. But anyway, in the homeless shelters, kids and adults don't get healthy, nutritious food. They get just cheap stuff because it's cheap. And so here, we bring thousands of pieces of fruit back to homeless shelters. These, by the way, what I'm showing you are kids from Kids Make a Difference and various projects making a difference. You don't have to participate with us to do these projects. You can do this on your own. You can do it for your church or your synagogue or your school and create programs for other kids to join you. But any of you, just so you know, are always welcome to participate with us. These are free programs. Our headquarters is up on Sherman Way. We are about raising a more conscious generation of kids, making the world a better place for everybody. And so it's just an opportunity, but these should be sparking ideas to you. What can you do to make a difference, okay? Holy guacamole, okay? Even at the avocado festival, we went and we got a bunch of the avocado growers just this past spring to donate loads of avocados, which are very expensive, to bring to some of the homeless shelters. Over here, this is where we were actually making lunches. If you can see pictures, some of the kids are taking brown paper bags and decorating them into what we call happy bags. They look pretty and happy, they're not wearing brown bags. And then we were making lunches and packing lunches and bringing them to people who are homeless. There are places where homeless people can go and get food sometimes. But some of the hardest core, the most difficult, the most troubled homeless people don't even know how to get to those places. So we were bringing home food to the homeless people. You understand that? You following some of these ideas? Okay. If you have any questions about them, I'll take it in a little bit. Here, by the way, and I want you to know, most of our ideas and projects come from the kids who are involved. So just like some of these kids have ideas, you can have ideas, you can get involved with us or on your own or whatever. But a number of kids, this was a dozen years ago or whatever, or more than that, said, well, we want to participate in Habitat for Humanity. Some of you may be familiar with that. It's an organization that builds homes for the homeless. It's a fabulous organization. But them and many other organizations don't let kids a lot of your ages come to their programs. Any of you who are on the older end, you know, 16 and above, you're allowed to participate in Habitat for Humanity. And when you are 16 and older, I encourage you to do so. I really do. It's an amazing experience to be working with a team and building a home for people who didn't have a place to live. But if you're under 16, they won't let you at the construction site. That doesn't seem fair. There's a reason for it. But see, you know what we did? We created our own project where we were building birdhouses and mailboxes to go to the Habitat for Humanity facilities. So you get the idea. Even though we saw a problem that we couldn't participate because our kids are too young, we found the solution. And I want to remind you, that's what life is all about, too. Are you going to be a person who finds problems in life, or are you going to be a person who finds solutions in life, right? Take planning and organizing and do the very best you can to find solutions. We created a solution here. But look at those cool mailboxes and birdhouses. Here, you see these kids with all those backpacks? I know school just ended, and I encourage you to think about the backpack you used for school this year. Probably thrown in the bottom of the car, in a trunk, or in a closet, or something somewhere. And as the new school year starts, maybe, I could be wrong, many of you will probably be asking mommy and daddy, you want a new backpack for the school year. You don't want to use that old one. That was last year's. I'm not saying that's the case, but that's often the case. When I was a kid, like some of the adults here, the big deal was getting a new lunchbox, right? Those metal lunchboxes. Anyway, we do a project called... Operation Backpack. At the end of the summer, we collect backpacks for people who aren't using their old ones, 
and they are in good shape often, and some of them, if they're not, they can be repaired, etc. We also collect old school supplies, we stuff them in the backpacks, and we deliver them to kids who are in very poor neighborhoods, who your old backpack is a dream of a treasure to them, even if it's not something you want. Does that make sense? Wait, did the back Excellent. Excellent. So we're going to start collecting those again. I see all these kids. Look at these kids. This kid in the very center. He's so happy. That Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle backpack that some other kid's old backpack to him is a joy. Here. See, we're visiting with some seniors. Many of you may be lucky enough that your grandparents live nearby and you get to see them. In today's United States society, many times grandparents live way over there, and you live way over here, and we don't get to see them very often. And a lot of times, seniors who can't maybe take care of themselves as completely as they would like to anymore, they need to live in places where somebody helps them and takes care of them. And they're around old people all day long, and I'll tell you, a lot of these old people, they're happy to have each other's attention, but they miss the vibrancy of your young energy. And they love it when kids come and visit them. And so we go, and we go, and we don't just go like some schools go, which is great, and they sing a concert and they leave. We go, and you see, we're sitting with them, we're talking with them, we're interacting with them, we're playing games with them. Okay, we do some great activities with the seniors, and they become like adopted grandparents, and they love the kids coming. And I'll share with you this young man here, who used to love to come to the retirement home, he's now in college, he used to like to come to the retirement home and sing and play piano with the residents. When he got to he became 16, and he was old enough to get when he drives on his own, he would go almost every week and drive himself to the retirement home because he didn't need us anymore. That's why our programs are especially here for you young guys, because how do you get places without somebody taking you there? When I was 10 years old, my friend Tom created a little nonprofit organization. It was the first one I was involved in. As soon as he said he wanted to do this, I was right on board. I was his right-hand man, and I was so excited about it, but he deserves the credit for it. It was an organization he called, called Kids Helping the Earth, and he created it especially because there was a creek near where we lived that had shopping carts and garbage in it, and we rode our bikes to go and clean up the creek. We cleaned up the creek. We wanted to do other projects, but nothing else was close enough, and we couldn't get parents or others to drive us and support us, and I want to tell you this is a sad story. This kid, Tom, who at 10 years old was one of the most caring people I ever knew. By the time we hit high school, he was one of the most depressed and unhappy people I ever knew. Because the adults in our community, the opportunities weren't there. They didn't support us. I never gave up on the passion, but I regret that he did. And I don't want that to happen to you. Every one of you has a good, caring heart, okay? Use that heart. Find opportunities to nurture your heart. What would happen if you laid in bed all day and watched TV and played video games, which I'm sure you're not doing, okay? And you didn't use your bodies and your physical energy. Your body would atrophy. What would happen if you didn't use your mind and stimulate your intellectual capacities? It would atrophy. So what happens if you don't use your caring heart? It will atrophy. That means it's weaker and weaker. Do you understand that? So we want to nurture our caring. That's what we're talking about here. Even at Halloween, who likes to make a uh, little bit of that? Jack-o'-lanterns. I was missing the name, okay? Not only do we get a bunch of pumpkins and we make jack-o'-lanterns for ourselves, but we make some pretty happy, cool, and weird jack-o'-lanterns. You can see some of them there. And we bring them to homeless shelters and youth centers and other places where they might not have had in retirement homes. So we spruce their places up for the holidays as well. Not just Halloween, but that's a picture here. By the way, those are the two that I made. They're the easiest possible jack-o'-lanterns to make. But my last name is Mars. I'm Andy Mars, right? So Andy Mars. And so my office, my home, there's aliens everywhere. So I always make alien jack-o'-lanterns. And doesn't that look like a real easy one to make? I'll be honest, it's easier than any of the hard ones the kids make. Here, when we are off from school on certain holidays, I deeply believe in you realizing there's a reason you're off. It's not just to go to the mall and buy mattresses and stereos and cars on sale. Not that you're probably buying mattresses and those cars, right? But when it's Veterans Day, you see all these sales, Veterans Day sales. Or when it's President's Day, we see these sales, President's Day sales. But that's not what people fought for our freedoms for. That's not what our country was supposed to be all about. So what we do on Veterans Day, we actually go and spend time with veterans. When you're off from school that day, you'd be welcome <coughs> to join us. And we go and we honor and thank those who protect and serve and enable us to have the freedoms that we have. So that we have all these choices. Get it? So you can see us, and yes, you can see some of the kids. We get to climb in some of the military uh, vehicles, and we get to put on some of the military gear, and it's fun and all that. And the most important thing is thanking our veterans, honoring them. And on President's Day, we go. Anybody here been to the Presidential Library in the City Valley, the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library? Okay. First of all, if only it were possible, I would encourage your class in school to go and spend like two weeks nonstop there and never run out of things to learn. It is filled with education and information about history of this country, not just about that one presidency. But you know what we do? Do you see these kids here? You see these kids dressed in nice suits and all of that? We go and we honor our presidents on President's Day by helping kids 
learn about our presidents, they each have learned a presidential speech from a past <coughs> president. And you see this podium here? This is called the Blue Goose. They called it the Blue Goose because people claim the top looks like a goose. I don't see it. I never get that. But it was the podium that used to be in the White House that the President of the United States used to give his speeches from. And we have kids giving speeches. And there's loads of other people who we don't know who are listening to you give speeches. So not only do we build public speaking skills and communication skills and confidence and all of that, but we are honoring, again, presidents, our country, which is, you know, the things that we are lucky enough to have here. And here, speaking of that, you know who some of these guys are? Do you know who this is? Anybody know who that is? It is a police officer. He happens to be the captain of the entire West Valley Police Department. That's Captain John Egan. Okay? Uh, but anyway, these guys were visiting with the police officers. In fact, this was not Sunday, but this past Sunday, which was Flag Day. Who knew that Sunday was Flag Day? I should have asked you that before I said it. Flag Day is June 14th every year, okay? It is an American holiday. <coughs> you can honor it by raising your flag, but we honored it by spending the day at the police station making cards and thanking police officers and firefighters. We can thank veterans as well, but we have Veterans Day for them, which if there's no special holiday for our police officers and our firefighters, we've decided for the last 20 years that Flag Day is our perfect day to thank them, and we do other programs with them as well. Here, we participate in other community events. There's community walkathons to support this cause or that cause. You can participate in all these different possible community events with your parents and our group and others, etc. You can see a lot of that there. All right, who knows what that building is down here? Who knows where that is? The bottom right picture. Yes. Good try. It kind of looks New York-ish, but it's in L.A. Who knows what it is in L.A.? That is City Hall, all right, parents? We have to take our kids on a trip to City Hall. If they can't recognize L.A. City Hall, that's something we got to do, maybe a failed trip this summer, okay? Velesco well, mentioned that they, in your quiz bowl game, there was no beach clean mentioned. Well, we do a lot of beach cleans. Can anybody read what we made out of all this uh, here? What does that say? It says kelp us, but it means help us, yes. Get it, kelp seaweed. Okay, anyway, so we do various beach cleans. One of the beaches in, Mat Mat in Malibu, anybody been to El, El, El Matador Beach? You been to El Matador? Can you describe it to everybody who hasn't been there? It's very unique. There's something unique about it. Anybody know? Yeah. No, actually, it's pretty clean because we've adopted it, so we keep that beach clean. That's our adopted beach. But it's got these cool rock sculptures where you can climb inside of it and climb on, on top of it and all of that. If you're a climber, who's a climber? El Matador is one of the best beaches for climbers. Okay, with parent supervision. So we've got a lot of beach clean stuff here. This, these are some, some creek cleans. We've got here, what are they cleaning up here? Walls. Yeah, what was on the walls that they're cleaning up? Yeah, what, what do you call that? Graffiti. Who here has ever graffiti? No, don't tell me if you did, I don't want to know. Okay. It's not something to be proud of, right? I will tell you, the kids who grow up with our programs cleaning up graffiti are not kids who are ever going to be so selfishly motivated that they're going to find it necessary to go and put their messages and tags, as it's called, all over other people's property. Would you like it if somebody took some giant Sharpie marker and wrote all over your stuff? Would that be nice? No. Yes, what do you want to say? Um, I, in my neighborhood, there were some new kids that moved in the neighborhood, and they've been doing graffiti all over the highlights, um, all over the highlights, and it's very disturbing because they use bad words, and, they, um, and it's um, not really such a great thing to do, and they're doing it on the thing. You have every right to be upset about that, and I'm proud of you for realizing it's a problem, and I'm going to encourage you, we can talk about it together today, what can we do to make it better, and there's multiple solutions, okay? So I'm going to go through a few more slides, and then if you remind me, as soon as I'm done, I want to come back to that exact issue, and let's talk about the multiple things that we can do. Remember I started out saying we all have choices on what we do? Those kids are not making good choices. You're making a good choice to care about it, and we can make good choices on maybe how we can help you take care of it, okay? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Xavier. I mean, it's 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 selfishness is what it really is. A lot of people do what they do in our society. 
because they don't seem to care about others because they haven't learned to care about others. Do you understand? That's why I had to those hearts at the beginning. I want you to realize you have the power to care, you have the power to make a difference. But some people, they just are so insecure sometimes that they feel they have to have their name out there and all of that. Do you understand? I'm not saying it makes it right, but maybe we can help other people become more secure. I'll share with you real quickly. This weekend I got a call from an old friend of mine. I've known him since we were, you know, way little munchkins. On, when we were seven years old, or six years old, whatever it was, second grade, we didn't have we weren't in school yet together. And we're at lunch. And can you imagine two months into the school year? Okay? A new kid goes to a school, doesn't know anybody. And the principal's at the door of the cafeteria with this little kid who I could just see was about to break into tears because everybody's with people they know, and I can understand that he was feeling left out, insecure, lonely, right? Didn't know where to sit or who to talk to. And so I remember, at six, seven years old, I yelled to him, I yelled, Yo, kid, come sit with us! Made him feel good, and we are excellent friends to this day, that many decades, decades later. Now, I'm not trying to take credit for what's not deserved, but if I didn't reach out to him, or somebody didn't reach out to him, who knows, maybe he would have felt more insecure and caused problems and had different difficulties in his life, right? By the way, you know what he does now? Where's Elliot? All right. He works for a company that gets uh, solar power in schools all across the country. And where did I get him to training? Uh, what's this Real goods up in, up in UK. Okay. Anyway, so we're cleaning up graffiti here. We just got a few more here. We're cleaning up some other trails, taking care of nature. Look at this. Do you see all this trash here? That was scattered around one of the parks. That was in Santa Monica, but we cleaned it up. We made it better, right? We have the power to make it better. Whether you get a big group and clean up a lot of trash, or you know what I love, son, is that some of the schools I consult to, because I'm going to add hundreds of schools across LA as a consultant, okay? Because as somebody said, I'm a doctor of education. But I occasionally, not often, I see a kid walking by, instead of walking by the trash on the ground, I see them see something and they pick it up. Picking up one piece is a dip, makes a difference, right? Doing a whole class project and cleaning it up, cleaning the whole park up or the whole playground up is even better. But every little thing, making a difference. Look at this, cleaning up more of nature. Planting. Not only do we clean up what is there, but we can plant and reharvest and make the world better. Especially, you know, after the Malibu fires a number of years ago, we did a lot of planting out there. We plant community gardens at various schools. There's so much that we can do to plant, and that brings more oxygen to the world, which helps us breathe better and makes us healthier and more vibrant. I'm not lacking any vitamins anymore. Okay. <laughs> Recycling. Look at all this stuff. The same stuff we cleaned up with the park. We can then sort it, not just trash it and end it up in a landfill, but we can recycle and make things better. Then we take some of the materials that we have collected that could go into recycling and we turn them into art projects. We don't need to go to Michael's Art Supply, not putting down Michael's, I like Michael's, but we don't need to go to Michael's Art Supply and buy a bunch of materials. We can actually use, do you know what this was? What was this, do you know? It is a totem pole now, but it was a toilet paper holder. Those little cardboard toilet paper holders. Okay, just like here, those were toilet paper holders turned into binoculars, right? This cup was turned into just a new little friend. These boxes, I love this one. These just old boxes and other miscellaneous, okay? See how you can repurpose things. You can reuse things. You don't need new stuff when you can reuse old stuff. And that is helping the earth as well. Does that make sense? Come up with creative ways to have fun art projects during the summer. Even here, this is something we do in my camp programs during the summer. We do this often. We take old soda bottles and water bottles. And you know what we made out of them? Rocket. We make rockets out of them. And we hydroelectrically power them water power, and we basically use a bike pump, if you can see it, and we pump air in the water bottle that has water in it, it's upside down now, it's got a cork in it, the needle of the bike pump goes through, or the ball pump goes through the cork, pumping air, air, air. Do you ever feel pressured by school, by brothers or sisters, by parents, you ever feel pressured, and you just want to explode sometimes, and you need to kind of have a little space so you don't explode? Well, imagine a bottle that's got this water in it, and you pump more and more and more air in it, right? getting pressure, and it wants to explode, so it explodes away from the cork up, the bottle goes shooting up into the sky, you can see that here, and then the water comes down on you, which is a great thing to do during the summer as well. And we collect toys and blankets and things at Christmas time for children in need. Do you know who that is? Santa Right. I'm just one of his helpers, just one of his helpers, okay? Just at holiday time. Okay? We also do a Martin Luther King Day. Power of the pen. But you can do this any time of the year. You don't need a group to do this. It's easy to do at home when you're sitting there and thinking you have nothing to do. When you claim to say you're bored. But you know what my grandfather used to say when I said I was bored? Only boring people get bored. Entertain yourself. If you're bored, you won't be bored anymore. Right? Find something to do. But, power of the pen. 